I would say depression to me would be a, a, a false identification of myself. Like, my mind is not functioning well. It would be me identifying myself as someone who's more lower in self-esteem. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain that can't be helped and um, it's a really dark thing in my life and I think it is just something that really needs a lot more attention, um, especially in youth. Depression is when you start feeling as though nobody's there for you, you start feeling alone and you start losing interest and you, you, you have a lack of interest in what life is. It's like sinking sand and you can't figure out how to get out of it. When I'm really like severely depressed, I can't even move my fingers. Depression is a great thing in my life. My mom suffers from severe depression, so does my dad. And uh, my sister also has split personality disorder, which she also suffers from a bit of depression. So it's constant in my life, and as well as me. Um, I think just, it's not, I don't know, they don't put it on media enough. They don't show it enough. Sorry. Um, but just, with my own experiences, it's been a very, like, it's taken a lot of control over my life. I've been sexually abused, I've been physically abused, I've been um, neglected, I feel, I've been bullied, you know, um, I've struggled with alcoholism, I've struggled with uh, drug problems, I've struggled with um, a lot of things. Um, waking up some days and just being like, I don't want to be awake because I don't want to be alone throughout the day. And even though I might have people around me every day, sometimes I have them every day around me, I still don't feel like I have anyone. Even if I talk to them, I still feel it. It's like talking, but you, they don't, you can't really express it. No matter what you say, you really can't express that feelings. So depression has affected me great, uh, greatly in my life, as well as seeing it in my sister. My sister's my everything. My, she's just everything to me. And just seeing her like self-inflict and tell me about some of her experiences, how she feels she's going crazy, she's losing it. It hurts me because I would like to take that pain away and hold it like I don't care. Like if it's my sister, I would like to hold all that pain regardless of what I'm going through. And like also my mom, just, she doesn't handle it well either. Just messages me, tells me if she like she wants to die and I have to like listen to that and also be there for her. That's what I also think in my life. I've, I've been dealing with it, but not really expressing it. So being a support system for other people, but not allowing support to myself. My father was never around. Um, my mother was around, but she wasn't really around because she was always traveling for her work. So I didn't get to see much of my parents. Um, so growing up, was, it was very lonely for me, I felt, because um, neither of us share a father, so we are just like half siblings. and. We kind of all live in our own worlds and all growing up differently, so it was very lonely. Like, it's like a big family, there's a lot of people in the house, but you kind of still feel alone, almost. So the different aspects to kind of think about is, there's a biological aspect, and that's about, do you have family history of depression? Um, what's happening in your own sort of brain chemistry and your own sort of neurological system? Then there's a psychological component regarding how you grew up, what happened to you, how you formed your own self-esteem, um, 
what happened to you as you were growing up in terms of trauma, how you dealt with it, how you were helped with that. And then there's also a social aspect in terms of how you fit in and fit in to others, friends, community, family. And one of the predictors, one of the risk factors we know for developing depression is social isolation. And once you're depressed, you also tend to isolate yourself, worsening, worsening your depression. I'd been experiencing problems with alcoholism and taking drugs and just sexual deviance, basically. And I would go out and I would do drugs and I'd take alcohol and I'd try to like numb the pain and it just wouldn't go away. So when I got home, I took every single pill that I could find and I, I sat in my bed and just waiting to die, basically. And my sister said something to me and that's when I snapped out of it and I'm like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You cannot do this to yourself and your family. And that moment I told her, I was like, dude, I just took a bunch of pills. And she took me to the bathroom and she like forced me to throw them up. She called the neighbors, they called the ambulance. And I just remember waking up in the hospital so hazed that like, I didn't understand what was going on. And from that, I went into, immediately into psychiatric um, care for 30 days. I've missed a lot of lectures, just waking up and being like, uh, I don't want to be there. Like I said before, just waking up and being like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be awake actually. I sleep most of the day away. Um, in 2015, I think that was the first time I attempted to take my own life. Uh, I can't swim, so I decided to jump in the sea and just hope that like no one saves me. But somehow I got washed up onto a rock, caught between a rock, and I could just pull myself out. But um, I never really speak about that day. No one really in my life knows about it because I don't want it to affect them. But yeah, so personally with me, it's always been in my life, I think, ever since I was young. I was always on my own, so I always lived my life like that. Um, even though I have my mom and my dad, they never, I never really grew up with them. They weren't present. Even if they were there, they weren't present mentally. So it's always been a constant in my life, still something that I'm trying to overcome, stay positive, but yeah. One of the symptoms of depression is that you can get overwhelmed by feelings and thoughts of hopelessness. And that ties into the future. There's nothing to look forward to in the future. I'm not coping in the future. And there's also these thoughts and feelings of guilt and worthlessness. I'm not good things that are done are bad. And those feelings and thoughts can become quite overwhelming. And as they become overwhelming, it leads to suicidal ideation, which can look along things like, I wish I was, I'd rather be dead, or I wish I was dead. Or what's the point of being alive if I'm feeling like this? And so it kind of can start like that, and it can move along to not just thinking like those thoughts, but starting to plan how you would do it, maybe obsessing over wanting to do it, to actually trying to do it or doing it. Um, I have a son, he's gonna turn two soon. Um, he was my, my main like motivator for like pulling myself out of this kind of hole that I had kind of dug myself and other people have helped, but I put myself in that hole because I wasn't actually trying to be productive with my life. I just sat there and I was being depressed all the time and it wasn't helping anyone. It wasn't helping myself, it wasn't helping my son. So I just thought about, you know, him losing his father and now losing me as a mother. It would just be unfair on him, you know. So I still live with that guilt today of trying to take my life, but I always find comfort in the fact that he, he'll he have a better understanding of what mental health is when he grows up. I think it's also the lottery of, like, this one book I read, they talk about the lottery of birth, like what you, you become a byproduct of, like all your experiences we made up of that. And growing up, I didn't have the best start. Um, I was homeless quite often, uh, just moving home to home with my brother and my sister. 
and also seeing my dad leave and then my brother and also like it's just many things that that have happened that I think have caused it from the start and also I guess my dad and my mom having it I don't know I think that also plays a part in it. It's kind of this thing where if you have mental illness, automatically people just assume that you're crazy or that you're not functional or you're a problem to society. And that's how the media portrays it, that how, that's how the films portray mental illness. Everyone doesn't want to have a conversation about mental illness because it is uncomfortable. And to acknowledge someone else's feelings and someone else's experiences is not something that our society does very well. Black communities, colored communities, um, especially the older generations, they don't necessarily seem to understand what depression is. There need to be a lot more people being open about their own mental illnesses, struggles, whatever, challenges. There could be a campaign around this where, like the Me Too movement or the, you know, that these accomplished individuals share just a little bit about their experience and how they've had to deal with it. That could help guys like me, guys younger than me, and people who are facing similar issues. There needs to be more accessible help in university in particular, and even starting in high school, because I feel like a lot of people don't know how young it can start. My friends, mainly, they always hear, like, my one friend Ludwig, he will come here like six in the morning. I mean, he skips here a lot, but he, he comes like six in the morning. If he knows I'm down, he's like, look, I'm coming through right now. My other friend Kaylee is always here for me. It's like, my friends are my family. Like growing up, I didn't really, like as much as I love my family, I didn't grow up with them properly. You know, we've always been moved around or moved apart. So my friends have been my family, my support system. It's like they're the reason I feel like I'm still here. Recently, I've just st stuck to going to a psychiatrist because I feel like I have a better relationship with him. He's, I've been to many, like I think five, and I think he's like, the one that I have now is the best at helping me and understanding my problems specifically. I don't think people do, are mentally educated. I don't think people do understand the power of their thoughts, their mind. I think if maybe there would be an awareness on what thoughts can do, because thoughts are alive and we are the ones who create them. And because we are the ones, we have power over them. But at some point, we sort of lose that power and let it use us. So I believe if people were to be educated more on how depression is, how it affects people. Educating not only people with depression, but people around them, um, educating and training more counselors and therapists and psychiatrists because the burden of illness is growing. And depression as an illness is growing. It's a, the reasons are multifold, but they're definitely not diminishing, they're increasing. And there's a lot of work to be done. And I don't think the work will ever, is ever gonna end really.